Welcome everyone. I am Nivedh Shehpur and today I will present our work on adaptive robust kernels for non-linear least squares problems. Least squares minimization is one of the most popular approaches in order to estimate parameters from measurements or data collected. Least squares usually results in the maximum likelihood solution if the data is Gaussian distributed. However, if there are outliers in the data, there is no guarantee of the maximum likelihood solution. And in real data, outliers and ambiguities always occur. This can be due to the fact that two places look alike, or this can be due to many other sources. And the optimization is usually quite sensitive to these outliers. So over the years, people have come up with alternative loss functions to the to the squared error. Uh, for example, here shown by the Hoover, Cauchy, Kevin McClaw, or Welch, each of which have a subquadratic loss which penalize the outliers much lower than a quadratic cost would do. In a way, this helps to avoid the solution moving far away from the actual one. So this robust kernels or robust losses are related to weighted least squares. So if you actually look at the solution at the optimum, the gradient to both these losses goes to zero. And if we do a little bit of manipulation of the equation shown here in the slide, we can find a relation for the weight that must be used in a weighted least squares corresponding to the robust loss that we have. And therefore, using this setup, we are able to use existing solvers, existing least squares solvers to solve uh, problems using the robust loss. But then the question comes, which kernel or which loss function should I choose? And the answer is, it really depends on the outlier distribution. So there are different kernels which work well with different outlier distributions. And this is often uh, uh, difficult to determine a priori as this outlier distribution can change on the go. So what many people do is to come up with a scheme like the following. You, st you start with a loss function or a kernel which does a strong uh, down weighting for some number of iterations. Then you optimize your solution or you optimize your problem with a weaker kernel. And then finally, once you're sure, you can remove the outliers which fall below some behind some threshold and then finally use the uh, square error or a Hoover for the remaining optimization problem. As you can see, this is quite a handcrafted approach and requires tuning for each new problem. Recently, Barron came up with a, a new generalized robust kernel, which has an extra parameter here shown by alpha. By changing this alpha, we're able to approximate different loss functions. So this one formula, although it's a bit more complex, it's able to uh, explain several uh, uh, kernels. In addition to explaining se several kernels, kernels, we can also interpolate in between these kernels, giving us a higher resolution in terms of uh, um, uh, in terms of the um, the the variety of loss functions available. Uh, here, I show you two two graphs of the various renderings of these loss functions at different values of alpha. Lower the value of alpha, higher is the down weighting for the residuals for the last residuals and we would see that in many robotics and computer vision applications we would need these uh, higher down weighting uh, uh, kernels in order to deal with the distributions that occur in real data. So in order to turn this generalized kernel into an adaptive one where the alpha can be changed on the go, Barron proposes to use an uh, adaptive robust kernel which is obtained by taking the negative log likelihood of a probability distribution function. This probability distribution function is defined using the formula shown in the slides, which also consists of a function uh, called as the partition function denoted by z of alpha, which is an integral of a function from minus infinity to plus infinity. In the original for formulation, as the alpha goes towards negative values, for a negative value, this uh, uh, partition function is not defined, and therefore this limits the, uh, the uh, original parents a formulation to be used only for positive range of alphas. In our work, we extend this by actually limiting the integral term in the partition function to a range from minus tau to tau. By doing this, we are now able to regain the, uh, uh, the larger alpha range by going into the negative values which are needed in several applications. So with this, we uh, come up with a truncated uh, a robust kernel which is able to adapt for a wider range of alpha values. So here I show a quick animation of how this truncated uh, robust kernel can be used to approximate various types of outlier distributions. As we see 
as the outlier distribution tails grow fatter, which means that there are a large number of out large outliers, our approach is able to model this outlier distribution much more closely than the original formulation by Barron. This is one of the contributions that we make in this paper. The next contribution is actually figuring out this alpha in a practical application. So in principle, this alpha can be thought of as another unknown and can be uh, jointly solved for along with our unknowns x uh, in this equation. Uh, as this can then be used as a new weighted least squares problem and can be solved as usual. However, this means that our Jacobians needs to be changed as now alpha is one of the unknowns. And also we have observed in our experiments that this alpha is quite sensitive and therefore can uh, take away the solution from the or take the solution away from the actual parameters that are there. Therefore, what we propose in this paper is to compute alpha separately uh, from our unknowns x. So we do this in an alternative minimization fashion where we compute for alpha given the best parameter estimates at time t minus one, and then we use this alpha as uh, uh, we fix this alpha and use it to compute our unknowns in the standard least squares problem. So in our approach, this alpha computation comes down to a 1D line search problem, thereby making the calculation fairly easy. So, and finally, we apply these two, two applications in robotics. The first application is that of an iterative process point algorithm, where we match uh, consecutive scans uh, uh, captured from a, a LiDAR scanner. Here now you see a fixed kernel. However, as the car moving, uh, as the car passes by, the ICP gets stuck or dragged into this car and fails. Whereas using our approach, as this moving car approaches our uh, ego vehicle, uh, the alpha goes down to a large negative value, effectively strongly rejecting these uh, points on the car and thereby letting our ICP to uh, be successful. And uh, we also did a more extensive evaluation on the Kitty dataset and made the comparison against several fixed kernels such as the Hoover kernel, the Kevin McClure kernel, as well as Barron's original uh, uh, adaptive kernel and a couple of other handcrafted schemes. We show that we are better or at least on par performance as compared to other methods. The advantage being that in our method, we didn't require any manual tuning. So just to give you an order of error, we are at the, at the at the range of two meters in terms of the translation error. And also I would like to note here that we didn't have any failure cases in any of the sequences that we tested. We also tested this approach on a bundle adjustment problem on four different environments in the Kala simulator. We used the Kala simulator to have the ground truth poses. And in this uh, experiment, we did a convergence analysis to understand if our approach brings better convergence. So what you see in this picture is that we start for a bundle adjustment problem with various initial guesses for our camera poses and the green points in the images show those starting points which resulted in a successful registration, in a successful bundle adjustment result. As you see in our approach, the spread of this green uh, area is the largest, effectively communicating that the uh, area of convergence or the basin of convergence is larger using the loss function we proposed as compared to other fixed uh, loss functions that are there. Finally, to summarize, in this paper, I presented a method where we use an adaptive kernel to adapt the shape of that kernel based on the current residual distribution. This lets us uh, react to the current uh, uh, situation in the, uh, in the scene. In this case, we also kind of uh, estimated the shape parameter and unknowns in an iterative fashion, which uh, allowed us to uh, avoid handpicking of these kernels and we did not need to tune any parameters for a new example. We also show two examples, one on an ICP and another on a bundle adjustment problem to show how this adaptive kernel can be used for least squares optimization problem. With that, I would like to thank you for your attention.